sheet of fusion type problems. And what we're going to do here is, uh, there's seven step problem solving like we've done in the past. Heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. So we're going to take a look at first, a couple of terms we have to review. Heat. Heat is a thermal energy that flows from something at a higher temperature to a lower temperature. This is measured in something called joules, represented by the letter J. Now, heat. If you hold on to a cold can of pop, it feels like the cold is creeping into your arm or you're into your hand, right? Right. But what's actually happening here is heat goes from a high to a low. So the heat's not, go the cold's not going into your hand. The heat's leaving your hand, making you feel cold. Next thing we're talking about is something called specific heat. This is the amount of heat needed to raise one kilogram of some material one degree Celsius. So that's going to change from substance to substance. Now we take a look at this right here. You're going to see a couple of things. The first thing you're going to see is the graph. <clears throat> this graph here is the phase change graph that we'd seen earlier. And we take a look here as, whoops, here we go, as this is the graph here. This is, that's supposed to be a T up there. This is as temperature increases, all right? Temperature increases, you go from here to a solid here. Then this right here, this section of the graph, this section of the graph is known as uh, the heat of fusion. Heat of fusion, remember, is how much energy required to go from a solid to a liquid. Now think of this as a fence, this flat part. So this at this area where it's flat in the graph, this is where all the energy is going into the phase change. Either, and it's, it's like a fence. If you're adding energy, then you're gonna go from a solid to a liquid. And if you're taking energy away, you're gonna go from a liquid to a solid. This is the heat of fusion. And up here, of course, you're gonna have the heat of vaporization. Now, to do these heat of fusion, heat of vaporization problems, the first problem we're going to look at is the heat of fusion. The mother equation that we're going to look at is Q equals M times F. Q representing the change in thermal, thermal energy. M, as we remember from density, M represents mass. And this H sub F represents the heat of fusion. Now, these problems that we're going to be doing, working with right now, is, are going to be water. And the heat of fusion for water is 80 calories per gram. Let's talk about a calorie. A calorie is a unit of uh, energy. Okay, gram we know is the unit label for mass. Now this H sub F, H, H sub F is a constant. All right. In other words, it is no matter where I go in the world, the heat of fusion of water is going to be 80 calories per gram. And a different substance like gold or uh, iron would have a different heat of fusion. This is the triangle of truth. Here we have Q and of course if you remember how this works is if I want to solve for M I just cover up M and then I get Q divided by H sub F. I want to solve for Q. I cover up Q, and that means it's going to be M times H sub F, which we know as the mother equation. So that is the triangle of truth. Let's try our first problem here. How much energy is required to change 200 grams of ice into water? So we have to first decide, okay, what exactly are we dealing with here? Is this a heat of fusion or a heat of vaporization problem? So we take a look here and say, okay, you're changing from ice to water. Well, ice is a solid and we're, water, of course, is a liquid. So we're having a heat of fusion problem. So we start our stuff. All right. So what do we know? Well, we know this right here. So we know that grams is mass. So it's going to be 200 grams. Like, okay, well, what else do we know? Well, we're trying to find energy. Energy is Q. So that's going to be, we go question mark. Well, what about stage one here? What else do we know? Well, we know H sub F 
because we're dealing with water now, H sub, sub F is going to be 80 calories per gram. Our next step, of course, is the mother equation. Q equals M times H sub F. And we have to ask, we have to change the equation. Well, does this Q and this Q look the same? Yes, it does. So we don't have to change the equation. Then we plug in the numbers. So Q equals, super easy, take 200 grams times 80 calories per gram. Q equals, multiply it out, which is going to be 16,000. And our unit label is going to be what? Well, if you take a look here, look at, and that's what we always write down the unit, label, unit labels when we plug the numbers. We have grams above, grams below, we cancel that out. So what we have left is, there we go, is calories. So the answer is 16,000 calories. All right, let's try another one here, or move on to the next type here. Now, heat of vaporization. Remember, heat of vaporization, this is going from a liquid to a gas, or from a gas, uh, by a, how much energy it requires to turn a liquid into a gas. For the, the heat of vaporization for water is going to be 540 calories per gram. Okay, so what is the equation for the heat of vaporization? Well, it's really easy, just like the heat of fusion. It's Q, which represents the change. That's what this little triangle means right here. The triangle means change. So a change in thermal energy, just like the heat of fusion, times M, which is mass, equals mass times the heat of vaporization. Now the heat of vaporization here, just like the heat of fusion, is it does not change. It's always going to be the same for water. And for other materials, it's going to be different. For water, it's 540 calories per gram. Take a look at this problem right here. So how many grams of liquid water should be changed into a gas if 12,420 calories, oh, misspelled calories there, of energy were used to heat up the water? So what do we know? Well, we know calories is 12,420 calories. Well, what is a calorie? Is that mass? No. So what is that? Calories is energy, so that's a change in energy, so that's Q. What other information is given? Well, we know that H is a, it's, it's a heat of fusion problem, so it's going to be H, but now we have to decide, is this heat of fusion or heat of vaporization? Well, let's see here. We're changing water into a gas. So that's heat of vaporization. So H sub V for water is going to be 540 calories per gram. And we're trying to find out the mass. So mass is a big old question mark. Plug in the first. Our next step is the mother equation, which is Q equals M times H sub, and we're dealing with vaporization, so it's V. And we, do we need to change the equation? Well, does this M and this M look exactly the same? Nope. We have to get rid of the H sub V, so we're solving for M. So we rewrite this, Q equals M H sub V. We're solving for M, so we put H sub V below the line here. Do the same thing to the other side. These cancel out, so we get M equals Q over H sub V. Or you can use the triangle of truth, cover up the M, and get the same thing. Here we have, the next step is to plug in the numbers. So we have 12,420. calories divided by H sub V, which is 540 calories per gram. And we do the math, and Q is going to end up equaling 23. Now, if we take a look here, we have a calorie above the line, calorie below the line, so we can cancel it out and we get G. So we're like, well, wait a minute, how does this work? If you take the math-wise, when you divide something out like this, we have to take and we flip. It's a, it's a fraction. So we have a fraction over a fraction. We take it and we multiply it out, and so it's going to be grams over calories. And this calorie and this calorie cancels out because that gets turned into that. So 
Our unit label now is grams, which makes sense because we're dealing with mass. And that is the heat of fusion and heat of vaporization problems for today. And stop. Just kidding. And